Hello everyone, my name is Khaled Siddiqui and in this video I'm going to show you how to use and take full advantage of your Garmin Nuvi 2597 LMT. Again, Nuvi 2597 LMT. Let's get started. Okay, so the first thing in this uh, unit you need to know what you have. So basically you have to see about what, what, uh, system information. This way you know exactly what you have in your in your hands or on your hands so uh, you we go to settings and then we scroll down all the way and we go to device click on device and click on about this tells us that we have model Nuvi 2597 and this tells you what hardware version you have how much RAM does it have internal RAM that does not include the SD card that's what's inside and uh, uh, it tells you a uh, built-in traffic receiver, yes or no. In this case, it does have a built-in traffic receiver, but uh, some of them don't. Uh, those that don't have traffic receiver, built-in traffic receiver, you have to buy an external traffic receiver cable. In this case, you don't need an external traffic receiver cable, but you do need an external traffic receiver antenna. That antenna is uh, Garmin uh, Nuvi, uh, Garmin GMT, TA10 and TA20. Actually, it not, it's not GMT. It's TA10 and TA20. Those are the external antennas. They are not receivers, but they are antennas that will work with this unit. And then you have the audio version, American English uh, voice command version, American English and all that. If you scroll down, you have additional information, including uh, some legal copyright information, and all the way uh, about the maps, what kind of maps are installed. This one, this unit has maps from 2018. It hasn't been updated for a few years, but even a 2018 map is, is, is usable. I mean, uh, the roads uh, do change, but they don't change dramatically for a 2018 map to be completely useless. So, so there you go that's what this is so now we're going to use it and i'm going to go back and show you how to take full advantage of it whenever you get a, a gps unit the first thing you need to do is you need to uh, basically create a um, complete uh, uh, m uh, customization of the unit for your specific needs you have to do a complete customization basically uh, what would you need in the GPS and that's what you need to do to make it uh, you know usable for yourself customizable for yourself okay all right so let's see what we can do to customize it go to settings first thing you need to do is you need to see the updates if it has uh, requirements of updates you have to plug it into Garmin Express and get the updates remember when a unit is uh, labeled Garmin Nuvi a number like 2597 and then followed after that number if we have LMT that means lifetime map and traffic if it's LM means lifetime maps only okay so this is LMT uh, so it has lifetime maps and traffic just to confirm that I'm going to show that to you I need to disengage this as you can see 2597 LMT all right now we already know how to mount this mounting is very easy it has a mounting grip on the back and this is the little thing that goes here bottom first snap the top and then this is how you take it out see that thing the, the grip very easy and you plug it back in to this this is a, a dash top mount uh, but you could have a windshield suction mount. It depends which one is your preferences. This unit is dash top mount. Anyways, so let's go back and start the customization. To do the customization, we click on settings. Let me increase the volume so you can hear the feedback. So we go to settings. Update we did. Now we go to maps. So we go one by one and customize everything. Maps and vehicles vehicle uh, icon of the vehicle on the map what kind of icon you want do you want it to, to be a car 
or you want it to be like little boots, you want it to be an arrow, you want it to be like a little hatchback, a pickup truck, you know, you pick whichever one you like, and the one that you like, you save. Map view. Map view is currently 3D. 3D map is like three dimensional, uh, which is my favorite, but you could choose north up or track up. If you choose track up, whichever uh, direction you are headed will be showing on the top. So if you are going south, the south will be on the top, but it will be a two dimensional map. It's, it won't be like a 3D like this is, you know, let me show you the difference. See how the car is, you could see three dimensional. The car is viewed from the top. You don't see the rear, rear lights anymore. It's viewed from the top. See the difference? I like the 3D map much better. Now, if you choose North Up, North Up is another way of two-dimensional in which the map will be displayed in such a way that the North side will be always on the top. The problem with this is that if you're going south, if you're going south on, on a road, going south, and you have to make a right turn, on the screen, you will be making a left turn. That creates confusion. So north up is not recommended. 3D, I think, is the best option. Okay? All right, so we click Save. Now we go to Map Details. Map Detail is normal. I like Map Details to be more. Now I'm going to explain the difference. When you choose more, small streets, including some alleys, will show in your map. If you choose normal, a lot of the minor roads and alleys and small streets will not show. It will only show major roads and street. And if you choose less, it will only show major highways, freeways and roads, but not small streets or residential streets and all that. So. The more you choose, the better it is. But if you have a big rig, if you have a 18 wheeler, uh, which can't go on s in small roads or on small roads, um, in that case, you have to choose less because it will simply hide all the roads in which your big rig vehicle cannot even go. So for car users, I like more, but you know, it's something that you need to uh, basically choose. It's your own preferences. So I like more and I'm going to click save. Now we will be working on, uh, that was map, map theme. Now this is something, oops, I passed it. Map theme. Now we're going to talk about the map theme. Okay, so under normal conditions, when you buy a Garmin, the map layout and colors are Garmin standard, but you can change it by clicking these different options. If you choose Belgium, the map, map color will slightly change. Denmark will change it. The, the changes are not magnificent. I mean, not major, it's slightly. This one is a different color. This one is slightly light, lighter color. The, oh, by the way, the changes are more uh, obvious in day colors than it is in night colors. Currently, I'm running night colors, so the colors are not so noticeably changeable. But when you see this one is so dark, did you notice the difference? See that it becomes darker and lighter. There, different ones. Some of them will change the road colors and the background colors. So these are the things that you have to see which one is good for you. Now, again, I'm running nighttime because the nighttime screen is best for recording from the screen using a camera. If I were to choose daytime, it will be too bright for you. It will be too bright for the camera. So uh, I, I can I cannot do that. Uh, but let me let me go back to map theme and choose my Garmin original, the original one, the standard one I think is the best. Usually sticking, uh, let me is, is, is tell you something. Always sticking to standard, sticking to something that you are used to uh, is much better than customizing it to something that you are not used to because every customization required retraining your eyes and also if you are used to customized menus, customized map colors in a Garmin, you will be familiar and comfortable with any Garmin. Even if you go and rent a car in a rental car, Garmin will have standardized colors. But if you customize it and get used to a customized version, 
then every other garment out there you will have a uh, when you're using any other garment out there you will have a hard time because you are not used to it that's why i recommend staying with whichever settings came with factory this way you are prepared and trained to use all of them uh, all garments i mean okay so now let's talk about map uh, tools map tools what are map tools map tools are the shortcuts that are visible uh, when you click on the icon of map let me show you what i mean let's say this is the map view map right so map tools are those tools that will appear when i click here the currently i have two map tools one is what's up ahead one is a volume control i could have stop i could have weather i could have phone i could have all of these things but only two are visible right now how do i customize map tools that's exactly what we were there for so let me go again and map in vehicle and let's go to map tools now what i'm going to do i'm going to check all of them i'm going to check this i'm going to check this i'm going to check this check this all of them why this is grayed out because a phone hasn't been linked to this gps yet that's why this is grayed out so i'm going to click save go back to main menu click here and now if i click on map tools voila i have one two three four five six seven eight nine different map tools why are most of these grayed out because they are not connected if this is if this were connected to a smartphone then my weather condition would be uh, available my phone connect would be available and uh, if i would have had uh, satellite signals and I would have had in an active route the other buttons the stops and detour would be available for example let me click here I'm gonna click anywhere in the map just click there and I'm gonna say go to that place just gonna just for the heck of it so right now it's it doesn't have satellite signal it says acquiring satellite so it's not gonna do because I'm indoors but when you when you do that you have stop available because now I can stop that routing. Now the stop is no longer available because I don't have an active route. And if there is a detour, it will be available. If there is traffic receiver uh, antenna, then traffic would be available. Again, this unit is equipped with traffic receiver, but it requires an antenna to work. And if you don't have that antenna, the traffic will be unavailable. Now, the antenna, as I said, it can be a Garmin, TA10 car charger or TA20 car charger. This unit does not have a traffic receiver. This unit has a traffic antenna, traffic receiver antenna for this to operate. So without this, this is like a FM radio with no antenna. It cannot receive traffic signals. So you need this cable in order to have a functional traffic signal. As a matter of fact, let me plug this in. Why not? Let me plug this in and show you i do have a cigarette lighter plug here in my desk so i'm plugging it in to show you the traffic features okay it's turning off cancel don't turn off on me please okay i have plugged in my traffic receiver and now if I go there, guess what? The traffic is available. The traffic icon, okay? So these are the things that, well, you need to know what is available at what time, okay? Now let's go back to settings. Here, where were we? We were at uh, maps and vehicles, okay? So we went to map tools. We understood that which map tools we could, you know, check and uncheck. So you know you, you could okay now if you forgot which ones were checked from factory and which one you customized just go on these three icons whenever you um, uh, make some changes and you forget just go to these three icons from any screen and restore the factory setting there you go i'm doing a restoration and now if i go to map tools only those selected tools from factory that were selected from factory are available everything else is not available see brightness is not available 
I think brightness is a good thing to have. I'm gonna check that. Save. Now if I go back to the map, to the original, and click here, I have my brightness, volume, up ahead, and stop. Okay? And brightness is this. You know that. You have done that brightness. I have to have it at maximum brightness so it doesn't flicker on camera. Okay. Now, let's go back to maps and vehicles, see what else we have here. So, map layers. This is very important. Map layers is uh, one layer tells you places along the road, the other layer tells you traffic conditions, and the other one is trip log. Okay, the trip log shows your footprint where you have already been to, so it could overlap if you're going in circles. It's only good if you're not if you're new in a place and you want to make sure that you're not going on the same roads that you were already before you were already there before and that you're not going in circles uh, that's another thing it's good for uh, but uh, uh, you know it's something that you need to uh, consider if it's if it's going to be good for you traffic it shows you a layer of the map that shows traffic congestion it will be in red color, orange or green, depending on how bad the traffic is. So this is a good idea to have. Places along the road will be a layer of map that shows you like uh, Starbucks is on their road, McDonald's, you know, parks, gas stations, things like that. It pops up on the map because you have it checked. So trip log is the only one that I, I wouldn't recommend unless you're new in a city. Uh, other than that, these two should be in there. Again, map layers if you change them and you're confused you know like all the changes you're confused you only have three options so you can go back and uncheck and check okay but if you want to reset everything we went through in maps and vehicles reset everything in map and vehicle you go here restore okay now we're gonna go to ma my maps my maps shows what kind of maps you have installed in this unit, we have North America 2019.20. Now, 2019.20 is actually a 2018 map, late 2018, um, more like November 2018. They come, they came up with, or December maybe. Uh, that's uh, the version. Now, I'm good with that. I don't necessarily have to update, but I could update if I wanted to. I have free updates on this unit because it's LMT. Remember, I said LMT means lifetime map in traffic. Okay. Now, if I want, if I had multiple maps on this, let's say if I if I had European maps, you could check or uncheck maps that you're not using. So if I had European map SD card on this, I could have unchecked it so that the the, the unit does not load those unnecessary maps, filling up the memory and slowing down the machine. Okay. Now let's go down and deal with navigation. Okay. Navigation, calculation mode, what this is. Calculation mode means, do you want the unit to take you through the fastest route, shortest distance, less fuel, off-road? I'll explain all of them. Fastest route is physical distance, the fastest physical distance. But what's the problem with fastest route? It could have tons of red lights, tons of stop signs, tons of speed bumps, tons of traffic, extremely congested intersections completely time consuming route if you choose shortest if you choose shortest distance i mean yeah that the, the explanation that i i was talking was shortest distance if you choose shortest distance you could have many traffic lights stop signs bumps and tra traffic congestion if you choose fastest time it could be longer route it could take you to the freeways you don't have any stop lights you don't have any red lights no bumps, no fewer traffic, higher speed, uh, higher uh, speed limits, but the distance going to be longer. The disadvantage between the two, if you are on a rental car that you are being charged per mile, and you are being charged, let's say, $2 for each additional mile if you go over your limit, of course, short shortest distance is your best, best option. Or if you have a big vehicle, uh, rental truck or something, uh, shortest distance might come in handy because a longer distance will probably uh, consume more fuel. And uh, if you choose less fuel, means it will take you from a route in which 
it's more fuel efficient as far as elevation up and down. Now let me explain to you what that means. I'm going to explain what that means as far as elevation up and down is concerned. Let's say you're going from point A to point B. One road goes uh, zigzag like this, zigzag, zigzag, and gets here. You know, the other road goes through a hill up and then down, and it's much faster than going zigzag, 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 zigzag. Okay, which one do you think is more fuel efficient? Obviously, the one which is zigzag, zigzag, because it does not cre elevate your vehicle from ground, fighting gravity, lifting your car all the way up in the mountain. And then when you're coming back down, you're, you, if you use your brake, brake pedals, you will burn your brakes. If you use lower gears, again, you're burning gas. Coming down, you will be burning gas. Having that said, this zigzag, zigzag, which is all level, is fuel efficient despite the fact that it's longer way. That's what fuel efficient versus, you know, uh, non-fuel efficient route means. So, uh, less fuel, fast time, and off-road. Off-road I do not recommend unless you have a vehicle that can handle off-roading. Uh, so if you have a normal uh, car, two-door, I'm, 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 I'm sorry, I mean two-wheel drive car, you don't want to go off-roading unless you have a 4x4 four four and a vehicle has to be lifted from the ground level uh, enough to create a decent amount of clearance under the vehicle in order to go off-roading. So... Faster time, I think, is the best option. But you can see which one is, suits you. Again, that was um, what we uh, went through was in navigation, it was calculation mode. Calculation mode, how the route is calculated. Avoidance is very important. Avoidance is the things that the GPS will avoid. If you want to avoid U-turns, why would you avoid U-turns? If you're dri driving a bus, if you're driving a RV, if you're driving a semi-truck, or if you're driving a very long vehicle with a trailer behind it, then you need to avoid U-turns. You cannot make a U-turn, you need to avoid it at any cost. The vehicle, uh, the GPS will not take your vehicle to any place where the road is like a dead end in which you will end up making a U-turn. So that's why avoiding U-turn uh, is recommended for big trucks. But in my case, I couldn't care less as far as avoiding U-turns. Why would you avoid highways? You need to click avoiding highways if you are on a bicycle or on one of those motorized bicycles. They call it moped or uh, some kind of a small motorcycle which isn't allowed to go on the freeways. So you must click avoid highways. Now, there are certain legal street legal golf carts, street legal golf carts, which can be legally driven on streets, but they cannot go on major roads or highways. On that, too, you need to avoid highways. OK. Avoid toll, uh, tolls and fees. Uh, tolls and fees and it's, a, it's a no brainer. So if you don't want to pay the toll roads uh, and uh, you click on this, avoid the toll roads. But if you're traveling to a city, uh, like when we were going to and uh, we, we were going to Rosarito, Mexico, and there was a toll road, uh, which wasn't much. It was like five dollars. But that toll road uh, going to Ros Rosarito, Mexico was much better to go through than going through small little uh, streets and roads it will take a lot more time. And, you know, some dirt roads and stuff, it could ruin your vehicle. And um, some countries uh, may not even be safe to go through small uh, rural, uh, rural areas uh, and, uh, you know, suburban areas. It, it may not be safe. You may be better off to go through the toll roads, uh, major roads, which is more crowded and safer. So avoiding toll roads is not always a good thing, uh, but, you know, it's something to think about. Avoiding ferries, of course, if your car cannot go on ferries, if you have a big truck, big rig, RV, you, you can't go on ferries. So you have to avoid that. So if you do avoid ferries, the, vehicle, the, the GPS will calculate your route through bridges and other things when you're crossing the water, but it will never take you through ferries. Avoid carpool lanes only if you're traveling alone. If you're always traveling with your spouse, uh, then you, or, or a companion or, or you know, 
driving a vehicle with multiple passengers, then you don't need to avoid carpools. Avoid unpaved roads. Okay, unpaved roads, if you can avoid, again, if you have a low rider vehicle or a vehicle that's not equipped to go to, uh, unpaved roads, that's a good idea. All right, so click save, whichever one. Oh, by the way, avoidance, if, if all these avoidance, all of these avoidance, also depends on the nature of the vehicle that you're driving, uh, not necessarily uh, your own options. Like, you don't have a choice if you have a bus. You have to avoid U-turns, you know. Okay. Uh, now, custom avoidance. Custom avoidance is you could avoid an, a certain area yourself, customize. Uh, for example, um, if you know a neighborhood is really bad, a really rough neighborhood, and you want to avoid it, then you can cu customize that avoidance and say, you know what, don't take me from let's say this area okay that don't take me from this area because very unsafe neighborhood and you know people have been you know shot there or whatever you you choose that area that you want to avoid let's say I'm, I'm just making this up so i'm not you know bad mouthing people's homes or anything or areas residential areas you click next um now it says touch avoid area opposite corner so i created a square box one corner and then the opposite corner all i can go bigger and avoid much much larger area assuming this entire area let me make it bigger assuming this entire area that you see here is like basically rough neighborhood this entire area is rough neighborhood then I click next this whole area will be avoided so this avoided area is area 000 you know area 000 is this area now I could you know rename it I could say rough neighborhood oops I screwed up let's see rename I could call it bad neighborhood. I don't know if I even spelled this correctly. Oh, I put one extra O there. Bad neighborhood. Now I know, I know. N E I G H B O U R is the British spelling, British English. But I wrote it in American English. And I also put instead of bad. There you go. Bad neighborhood. Done. So that's the bad neighborhood. I, I, I avoid it. Okay. Now, if I want to delete this avoidance. I click here bad neighborhood delete so now I don't have any custom avoidance okay so basically you put you choose one corner you choose another corner create an avoidance area now environmental zones let me explain this environmental zone always ask avoid or allow so some places are they have environmental hazards such as uh, too much smoke coming from factories such as radiation, such as agricultural, uh, you know, danger, as far as mosquitoes and other environmental issues. Do you want to avoid that? You want it to ask you all the time or you want it to go? So environmental zones are not too many. I mean, it's not like every corner you will see an environmental zone. So to choose allow, I think is relatively safe, but that's something that you need to make a decision. Okay, now we go to restricted mode restricted mode is for people who always touch the gps and control the gps while they're driving so when you enable this it does not let you do anything when the vehicle is in motion it only allows you when the vehicle comes to a full stop so if you choose this if you check it it will not let you touch the gps in motion if you uncheck it it will allow you now why did i uncheck it 
I want it unchecked because I never enter the address myself anyways. I ask my wife to do it for me and she always sit right next to me. So we could be moving at, let's say, you know, 65 miles an hour on the freeway. She could enter an address or change an address or add, you know, uh, add points of interest in the address and what have you. All right. So I left it unchecked. GPS simulator. GPS simulator is for indoor, indoor use to simulate the location of the GPS. The unit, I don't like to check this on. I, I want to leave it off so that the unit tries to search for satellites. When you leave it off, it will search for satellites. When you check it, it will stop searching for satellites. Now, the GPS simulator will also kick in when the unit goes inside a tunnel or underground roads, streets. When the road or street is going in a tunnel or underground and there are zero GPS reception and then the GPS simulator, simulator will momentarily kick in to assume your speed and location based on the entry, uh, the speed, your entry speed inside the tunnel. Let's say if you're entering the tunnel at 35 miles an hour, the, uh, as soon as you enter the tunnel, like under the tunnel, there is no more satellite signals, right? So the, the GPS will assume your location based on that speed that you are right here in the tunnel when actually in reality you could be stuck in the traffic inside the tunnel. The GPS will simulate and assume that you're about to come out of the other end of the tunnel when you are not even halfway. So simulation is just for, you know, I would say... It's good for like 10-15 seconds. After 10-15 seconds, it's a guesswork. Let's say there's a bridge, a very, very thick bridge, eight-lane freeway that you have to go under it. This is where a GPS simulator comes in handy because it only takes you a few seconds to get under the eight-lane freeway bridge and, you know, get go to the other side. A tunnel could be a mile long, so that simulation is way too long and very, very inaccurate. inaccurate. Okay, so that was that. Now we have maps and vehicles. Uh, we already did that, okay. Maps and vehicles we did. Navigation we did. We already did the navigation, avoidance and all that. So now let's go to display. Display is a good one. Oops. Display. Now display the orientation you want to be landscape or portrait do you want your gps to be mounted sideways like a smartphone like this or you want it to be like this so this way or this way how do you want to mount it you choose if you choose landscape uh, this is how it's going to look if you choose portrait this is how it's going to look so now you have to mount your gps this way on your dashboard okay so cancel i like it to be orientation to be landscape okay so color mode see this is what i was talking about right now the color mode is on automatic at night time it becomes dark and during the day it becomes bright if you choose night it will always be dark even during the day if you choose day it will always be bright and white even during the night it is way too bright for your eyes not recommended so automatic or night is much better save Brightness, that's a no-brainer, you know, brightness. You could change the brightness, but I'm not going to reduce the brightness because if I do, the screen will flicker under the camera. Watch. Let me show you. Okay, the, you see how it flickers there? That's why. See how it flickers? So you have to be more than halfway for it not to flicker so that's why I don't like to do it when you're recording a video okay display timeout do you want the display to shut off after some time of course not what if you're in the middle of a route I don't want that so never but you could choose four minutes or five minutes okay display timeout is never Screenshot. The screenshot takes a, an image of the screen wherever you are. It's good if you're in a new place so you can get a snapshot of where you are. Um, if you choose screenshot, uh, you will have an icon of a camera. You click on that and it will take a picture of that screen. For example, if I'm, I have that camera now, right? So if I go back, press this, 
and I go on the maps and I want to take a picture of this map. I took a picture of this whole entire map. So that's what, and I'm going to show you that picture later. But before I get to that, let me go back to, uh, you know, settings and display. It disables screenshot. There you go. That There's no more camera anymore. Okay, so that was uh, screenshot. Now, I could go down here, but I could go back and go step by step. So this one was display. Now we go to Bluetooth. Bluetooth connectivity. Bluetooth connectivity is to sync this with your phone. You could add a phone, uh, and to add a phone, you simply enable the Bluetooth. It's going to, it's, it is enabling the Bluetooth. Now, it's already added to my iPhone. I'm sure it will show up here pretty t anytime soon. Let me see my iPhone. There you go, Garmin Drive. No, actually, no, that's, that's a different Garmin. Let's see, this will be new friendly name Nuvi 2XX5. So it should be here, Nuvi 2XX5, this one. It's connected to Nuvi 2XX5. This is connected to this. That's easy. So, you know, if you wanted to connect it, if I want to, if I want to click here, if I want to click here, let me connect and I say disconnect, disconnect, I'm disconnecting, forget this device, forget the device. Okay. Now there is no more phone. So now I, you have to punch in this passkey in order to add it again. Okay. So. That's how you do it. Okay, let's go back. So it's enabled. I will leave it enabled. And now traffic. Traffic provider is enabled. Traffic information is enabled. This is the traffic provider uh, in uh, FM signal strength. This is the radio strength coming through this cable you know that I plugged in so it's it's full bar full five bars which is good and this is the provider as uh, here uh, you know United States and Canada uh, the subscription is current subscription is for traffic and it's a lifetime subscription this is a subscription lifetime subscription now here you can add additional subscription if you want to add subscription you click plus and then uh, you have to have a traffic code on that. I have a separate video. I'm not gonna give you know if each one of these uh, that you click it gives, takes you to a different world. I don't want to chase rabbit holes everywhere. So for everything I have a s independent video. I have another video that adds she teaches you how to add a subscription. Okay. Okay, optimization of route. Optimize route you could uh, manually switch routes or automatic if you choose automatic optimization on route it means that if you have four stops to make uh, if you enter one address after another after another and you want it to automatically switch for you the most uh, fuel efficient and time uh, saving route uh, that uh, will take you there for example it takes you to point a b c and d where you have entered point a d a b c like that this will take you one by one if you choose automatic. So that's that's a good thing to have route optimization. Traffic alerts. Okay, this is good. Traffic alerts. Do you want it to be off or you want it to be minor and severe traffic alerts or basic traffic alerts only? Most traffic alerts will will show even minor alerts for example a car has pulled over for um, uh, engine trouble on the freeway one lane is closed or well anything you can think of it will a tree has fallen on the road the road is closed uh, you know chp has blocked the road chp stands for for california highway patrol but it could be any other you know could be police officers block the road sheriff has blocked the road and this will give you basic will only inform you of severe alerts only major freeway shutdown major backup and traffic 
not minor things like if you have a 25 minute delay in a, in a freeway that will be uh, visible and basic too not only most okay so those are the traffic alerts traffic trends uh, okay now this is uh, basic historic uh, route uh, information that's being saved on this which will save you time for example every time you commute and this will memorize how much time it took you in which day of the week uh, uh, from different routes and then it will memorize this traffic conditions and it will give you uh, predicted traffic flow based on the past history it could be inaccurate so my, mine is unchecked that's up to you if you want to check it okay now let's go back so we are through with traffic now units and time we're gonna do that okay so the current time okay the t current time if you leave it automatic it will automatically connect to the satellite and choose the time of the region you have chosen for it so I like the automatic but you could change it manually back and forth if you wanted to but automa automatic is what I recommend okay now the time format you want a 24 hours 12 hours or UTC 24 hours good for me okay the units is kilometers Be why why have chosen why do did I choose kilometer when I live in America that's because this GPS unit is only for me when I go to uh, uh, Germany I often go to Germany that's where my family is so when I go to Germany I need to have it in kilometers so that's why I'm going to choose that one but you need to choose miles if you are in the United States now what difference does it make the difference is for example if you have a speed limit sign that says you have to drive 45 kilometers per hour your GPS will display that on the screen what the speed limit is uh, you don't want that to be different than uh, what's posted but because the GPS will tell you how fast you're going the sign says 45 the GPS says you're going 35 miles so you you're like oh I'm 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 safe I'm only going 35 the sign says 45 but guess what that 35 mile that you're going is much more than 45 kilometers per hour that's why you have to choose the one that's best for you best for the area you're driving okay position format is for coordinates in drink coordinates like if some in some places we when we, we were traveling in uh, Italy uh, there were very very complicated names like uh, uh, street names were like this long like this very long like 20 characters so we asked the hotel to give us the coordinates so we uh, were traveling based on the coordinates and the coordinate format you could change it um, uh, depending on what information is given to you if they give it to you by you know degrees seconds and minutes you do that if they give it to you by uh, uh, you know Swedish grid or MGRS you have to ask the person who gives you the coordinates and then based on that you have to choose which one is the right one so you could enter it okay all right position format let's go back we covered Bluetooth traffic units of measurement and now we are in uh, language and keyboard this is a no-brainer you know voice language okay voice language always has to be the language that you understand always you don't have a choice text language must be the language that you understand okay text all these texts like display keyboard language it's all in, in English right voice is an English word language is an English word because I have chosen text language to be English if this text language would have been Spanish or French voice language would be in Spanish uh, in French or or Langua di, uh, la language and keyboard will be lengua e scribar or something like that. I don't know. Uh, how do you say in French keyboard? Alexa, how do you say keyboard in Fra French? Keyboard in French is clavier. Clavier. Lengua di clavier. Yeah, it has to be. Okay. If it wasn't in, in French. Anyway, so that's why voice language must be the language you speak and understand 
text language must be the language you understand and read. Keyboard language is not your choice. You cannot choose the keyboard language based on what you like. Keyboard language must be based on the country you're traveling in. If you're traveling in Russia, you have to choose uh, Cyrillic keyboard. If you're traveling in Greece, you have to choose Greek keyboard because that's the name of the roads made with those letters. If you're in Germany, you have to choose German keyboard because alphabet of the street names or with those alphabet that you don't have in English keyboard. So this is very important to choose the, the language of the country you're driving. Okay. So that's that. Let's go back. Oh, another thing about uh, language and keyboard, when you choose voice language, the ones that have a name associated with it, for example, American English, uh, Michelle, American English, Samantha, the ones that have a name associated with it, they speak the street names or road names. The other ones don't. For example, if I choose this one, it tells me turn right on Broadway. If I choose this one, it tells me turn right. It doesn't say Broadway. This one says Broadway, First Avenue, Second Avenue, and all that. But this one doesn't. So make sure you choose a language, voice language, that has a person's name associated with it. Now, there, not only English has a name. If you go down, you have Serena in British English. Uh, this is also Derry by my voice. And Anna, Espanol. You know? All right, so that's that. Okay. Okay, now let's go back. Okay, so we did, let's go back. We did the display, we did the Bluetooth traffic, units of measurement, language, proximity alert. This is a good one to know. Proximity alert alerts you when you get close to proximity, the close proximity of certain things. You can have single tone, you could have continuous tone, or you could have it off. Single tone is recommended. Now, alert types, when you get close to what you want to be alerted. This is currently Garmin safety cameras. But what is Garmin safety camera? Let me explain this to you. In many countries, especially in Europe, when you are traveling, uh, almost everywhere in Europe, especially in Germany, uh, not only Germany, actually I travel in Austria, I traveled in um, uh, you know, uh, France, I drove in uh, Italy, I drove in Amsterdam, Holland, and everywhere they have these cameras, camera setup that will take your picture. I have been taken pictures of more by these cameras than my wedding night. So that's why, if you have Garmin safety camera alert, the GPS will alert you that a camera is about to approach. Watch your speed, slow down, camera is coming up. Or if there is a intersection with a camera, the GPS will tell you, you have an intersection that has a camera in it. So you better slow down. So these are the things that you need to pay attention. Okay. Now, where do you get the camera safety alert? It's, uh, it's sold by Garmin. You can download it and install it in your GPS. Okay. On that, I have another video, how to put the camera alerts. Okay. Now, let's go back. Proximity alerts. And the last one was device information, which we already covered in the beginning. Now, if you change a lot of these things that you don't know, you messed it up and screwed it up, you go here and restore factory default. It will reset everything to factory default. Okay. So that was all the settings. The GPS is now customized and ready for navigation. To navigate, you go where to, and then if you want to go home, you click home. If your home address isn't there, you have to enter it. Rental car locations, you know, address, you can enter a house number followed by the street. Let's say, uh, let's go, say 850, done. Let's say Broadway. B R O Broadway. This is I'm making up this address. I don't even know if it exists. 850 Broadway. There you go. It's 850 Broadway El Cajon, 850 Broadway Chula Vista. 
you know you can choose one all right so that's how you go to an address or navigate to an address restaurants you simply click it gives you what kind of restaurants you want all restaurants browse by style uh, barbecue places coffee and tea what do you want you could search if you want to go to Starbucks just go here type Starbucks there you go now we'll give you the list of all the Starbucks nearby you scroll down and you pick one which one you want to go to simple as that now if I had GPS reception please pay attention this is important if I had GPS reception this would not only show me the distance it would also have an arrow showing me the pointing which direction this is if if my if I'm headed north and I, I I'd rather go to a Starbucks that's seven kilometers away north than to go one that's five kilometers away south because then I have to go make a U-turn, go this way. That's why it's not showing those arrows because I don't have satellite reception. All right, so that was going to restaurants. And then gas stations, again, Chevron, you know, choose which one you want to do. And shopping centers, you know, add another shortcut. You could add another shortcut if you wanted to choose another category there you can choose category what do you want to add you want to add rest areas you want to add attractions tourist attractions let's add that let's add tourist attraction okay now look tourist attraction came in the list you could add more icons where to now if I want to go to a tourist attraction I click where to I scroll down and bingo tourist attraction I just added that okay this is saved places this is the places that you have already saved all saved places addresses points on map and coordinates so these are all the places that you know you could go to now let me tell you something if I wanna save an address how do I do it this is how you do it there are different ways to save an address you could click on the map where you are and and let's say you come here and you look at this and you look at this and you look at this and look at this and you say wow look at that beautiful lake I want to go there I want to go to that lake so how do I go to that lake the closest road that the car can go is this one for example this right here so I want to save that I go to see that I go to click on this little arrow make a make a little uh, what do you call it a uh, little flag and then I could go to save this little place I could either go to that place if I wanted to or I could click here and save it if I want to save this I have to give it a name okay so that's the name right now but I could change the name I could rename it see let me go back and show you where to saved save places see this is the one I, I just added a minute ago I could click on this on the info and let's rename it edit and the name is Uh, close to lake closed to close to lake done so this is close to lake so next time if I want to go to this lake close to lake I, it's a little heart there why is there a little heart because I saved the place and named it close to lake okay so that's how you save addresses okay all right so this was safe places recent is easy places you've been so these are the recent places that have been uh, that you can go to recent addresses save places recent places categories categories you choose restaurants shopping centers everyday life gas stations you name it so that's that if you want to go to a different city so right now this is only looking near Spring Valley you click here and click down a different city you could change it to Chicago 
like that. Chicago, Illinois. There you go. So I want to choose Chicago, Illinois. Now, at whatever address I enter will look in Chicago, Illinois, not in Spring Valley, California that I am. Okay. So this was the routing instructions and how to basically route. Uh, we covered that. Now let's go and look at the apps. What apps do we have? Tracker is places uh, and friends that have been to the places tracks your friends in your uh, you know uh, places you've been you you have to let yourself be be visible using your smartphone because this will only know your smartphone uh, gps location to inform the friends about where you are my garmin is no messages available but you could have messages from other users using your smartphone this will not only work if this is linked to the smartphone photo live only with smartphone dynamic parking availability it's only available with smartphone backup camera you have to have a special camera for the backup camera to work okay smartphone link you have an app you have to download let me show you smart link this one this one Garmin smart link you have to download in your computer which is this guy right there the icon looks like that Garmin smart link only then this will work all these other features will work and traffic will work the traffic with smart link could work through the through the smartphone not necessarily with the traffic cable eco route is economical route you know that for this it will ask you for your car dimension what kind of car you have uh, you know does it take diesel or gasoline those things you know so that's you have to you have to set that up voice command say a command volume volume is at 90 percent 50 volume is at 50 percent 60 60 volume is at 60 percent main menu exit exit okay you can change the phrase to say something else instead of this i'm not going to say it because this will kick in again instead of saying this word you can ch say a different word you could change it customize the phrase if you want to okay you could say something else customize you could say okie dokie or something else whatever you want to do but you have to choose a phrase that is not too common so that you don't say it accidentally for example let's say if your wife name is mary you what you don't want to say mary because you'd be yelling at your wife and she would be ye yelling at you 20 times when you drive 10 miles well it happens to me for uh, at least you know we'll be we'll be we'll be fighting and and you know discussing and arguing about little things that don't even matter and uh, we don't want the gps to be activated right okay so all right so that's that and where I've been, the list of the places that you have been to, and last spot. Usually the last spot comes in handy to find your car. If you park your car somewhere and you can't find it, then this will show you where was the last spo spot that you were. It will take you there. You click on that and it will take you there. Okay, so we covered that. We covered the apps, all the apps we covered. And basically that's it. Now. All the important things are covered. I'm still uh, under one hour. Uh, and, uh, you know, there are more things that I could talk for hours. But one last thing, I'm going to say this to the professionals. The, this is for the professionals. You don't necessarily need to learn this. Is to There are certain hidden icons, uh, menus. If you click on volume, on the upper right corner, keep your finger. Don't let go. Keep your finger there. Don't let go. And then you have clear user data, shutdown causes, developer info, uh, diagnostic logging, demo mode, picture viewer. Uh, remember the picture viewer I was talking about? I took a picture of the screenshot. So basically, that's the picture viewer. Let's see. Maybe, okay. Maybe I didn't take a picture or got it deleted. But yeah, so those are the things, the little hidden things. Let me see if we have picture viewer here. Let's see. 
picture viewer my Garmin So basically, when you r take a picture, a screenshot, it goes to a, a JPEG folder inside the Garmin drive, which you can then transfer to your computer. But uh, let me see. One last thing before I let you guys go is how to find what your elevation is. Once you go to map right here where it says direction, if you click here, you can choose what information you want to be displayed. If you want to know your elevation, you click on this. And now this is where your elevation will appear. If you want this to be your current time, the time will appear. If you want this to be your direction, north will appear. H same thing here. Shows all the information about your, you know, overall average, moving average, maximum speed, this and that. Oh, by the way, when you press and hold this down, that takes you to another hidden menu. Watch. The same hidden menu that we came before picture viewer see a, you know all of those good things you can come from here too all right okay i guess we covered everything and uh, that's that's about it we covered everything i really appreciate your patience in listening to this video please don't forget to like and subscribe and uh, thank you for watching